Hey guys and welcome to a new video. Today I wanna yeah, show you a build that I'm actually not a big fan of and uh, yeah, the reason is it's expensive as F, okay? We're talking about Headhunter, we are talking about Inspired Learnings, we're talking about gear that is worth more than 300 exalt somewhere at that range so you might ask yourself wait a second that's a build that's so expensive that probably not yeah probably not even one percent of the poe community can actually afford so why you're doing this this is more of an an information video this is the carry build that's going uh, that's around for uh yeah quite some time that people offer those five emblem uh carries that we're gonna showcase here as well um and yeah where is the the who is the owner of this build you might ask because you're gonna say like hey wait a second i see don the crown playing this build i've seen q dog doing the same i see wisp i've seen other streamers uh doing the same build so why do you just copy them and just make your own version or something no the thing is this hat hunter abuse build what i call it with uh, shackles of the wretched and kaom's roots with the um solstice vigil is around for quite some time. If you remember last week, I played the same kind of setup for my permanent Val Righteous Fire Juggernaut. So this mechanic here is nothing new, okay? So there is no mastermind that came up with this idea. The only thing that changed is basically this jewel here, which I'm going to explain a little bit later. It's It should not be just to get this right okay this should not be an entire build guide where you say like yeah this is what i need for this uh, carry type of build uh for me it's more uh, important to show you guys something like that if you are not familiar to that kind of play style, how ridiculous this gets at one point it's more about i want to explain how this build is working and why this build is basically the best five emblem carry um that you can actually uh play here right or to get the most loot out of it. Why do you have Kaom's Roots, the Shackles of the Wretch? How is this working together? So, first things first, one nice five emblem carry here. Or at least like, this is my friend here, Gundy. He will, uh, he will play the Pillar Guy. That means he will reset all the monsters. So we're just gonna see a small footage here how this build is working. First of all, I'm switching weapons. I have this one in here. This gives me Rampage. Oh wait, go, uh, yeah, let's just, let's just start, he's just waiting for me. So, the first thing is, we're gonna activate our flasks, and now we're just waiting until my rampage procs, which is right now. Now I walk, weapon swap, now I have my actual weapons in here, and now we're gonna cyclone. So, the important thing is to kill off rare packs with an insane amount of cyclone area. And you see on the top side, okay, we already have like a bazillion buffs, but we are looking for some kind of special buff so in the early start he will reset the, uh, the mobs i'll just cyclone around and then just killing um the rare pack so i get more and more hat hunter buffs inspired learnings and through this build these going to last like one and a half minutes okay and as you see the more mobs we kill we get faster we get stronger and now after like 30 seconds we can now stand to the bosses and see how good is our damage can we already one shot bosses or not so we're just gonna check this this boss is dead this boss is dead. Okay, we have now the strength to almost one-shot bosses. So the next four minutes, we're just gonna circle around here, one-shotting bosses, getting insane amounts of loot, and we're gonna keep on going. Gandhi, as the pillar guy, will just uh, step out of the barrier, walk in again, reset the whole monsters, while I'm taking not even one second to complete one circle here, right? And damage-wise, if we're gonna tell it like here, it says minus 21 million damage. This is a number um, the maximum PoE can basically show. This That goes up to like 20 million or something. But once you reach this number, it just says minus 21 million and it doesn't work anymore. Basically, I would now heal monsters, but we're still doing insane amounts of damage. So how much damage are we talking about? I think that it's going to be somewhere about 100 million damage that we are doing right now with these buffs, with these headhunter buffs. Um, and that's the reason why I'm actually in a 5-man carry where the bosses do have, I don't know, like 50 million life. But I'm just cycloning next to them and just one-shot them basically. 
Um, if you're wondering how do I know where I'm cycloning, because this build, uh, my character is, is three times bigger than the screen, the cyclone area. Dude, if I'm going to Act 1 now and kill one zombie at the coast, I'm probably gonna one-shot Kitava in Act 10. This is how big this range will get, okay? So I don't have to worry about anything. I'm just cycloning here, sometimes in the middle, so I can actually um, kill the mobs in the middle so the uh, pillar guy doesn't have to worry about anything, right? As a small key fact. Okay, so we're just gonna... Uh, we are 2 minutes 40 in. We already have al almost the third uh, row of buffs here. Let me kill some more. So, how do I actually know where I'm going? It's only about the minimap, okay? The only thing I do here is watching the minimap. And these uh, green points on the minimaps, um, these are the bosses. So, as long as I don't see any green points here, I'm just making my big cyclone turn. And as soon as I see a boss, I just, like, cyclone to the boss, but usually as soon as I'm next to the boss, he's already dead, and I can just keep on going, okay? This is basically the explanation on how you play those carries, and always make sure that your carry is safe. I would say it's now two minutes till the end. I will just speed this one up, because this was basically the explanation what you're gonna do as a carry. So I'm just going to speed up this two minutes so we can see the loot explosion, and then we're gonna go to the explaining part, how this build is working and why is it so insane. Welcome back! Stop the speeding here, as at least like for the Cyclone maybe. Uh, we have 10 seconds to go, so in the last 10 seconds I usually just Cyclone around like a madman. Yeah, still one-shotting bosses. This is just completely stupid build. Three, two, one. Let's take a look at the loot here. Yeah. Always make sure to keep cycloning because sometimes there is not bosses resetting. Yeah, this is the loot right here. Arena play. Two stone ring, orb of annulment, uh, glorious, uh, some jewels, you know, uh... What else do we have? Lair of the Hydra, some more stuff. Yeah, I think not too good, actually. Okay, anyways, uh, I told my mate here that we are just going to uh, leave it like that. He will now pick up the loot and I will go into the explaining part so we're not gonna just waste all of this currency here. Okay, what is the easiest way to explain uh, this one? I think, um, yeah, let's open the notepad here. This is probably the easiest one. So, when we kill a rare pack, right, the Hat Hunter will steal all buffs, okay? This is, this is the thing that Hat Hunter does, right? And he, it, it's really good at that point. When you kill a rare monster, you gain its modifiers for 20 seconds, okay? What is the Inspired Learning doing? Uh, the Inspired Learning is basically the small brother of Hat Hunter. It says, when you kill a rare monster, you gain one of its modifiers for 20 seconds. Hat Hunter, you gain all of the modifiers, okay? So if we're gonna take this here, Inspired Learning, one buff, 20 sec. So this is the, the base idea, okay? That means uh, you're probably thinking now, wait a sec, if Hat Hunter steals all the buffs, why do you get Inspired Learning? Why does this steal one buff if Hat Hunter steals all the buffs? The thing is, I'm not entirely sure what comes first, okay? That's almost a little bit weird. Um, maybe I could have done some research. This is just my my thing, right? Uh, my explanation here. So, Hat Hunter steals all the buff, and the Inspired Learning will then steal a buff that the mob didn't even have. Or, the, hat, uh, the Inspired Learning is stealing one of the buffs the mob had, and the Hat Hunter steals all the buffs still, okay? Let's say uh, buff one... We're gonna make it like that. So, what? let's say the rare pack has uh, these, uh, let's say four buffs, okay? Hat Hunter will steal all of those buffs, right? Inspired Learning will steal one of those. So, let's say in the end we're gonna have a buff one, two, two, or three, three, four. So, Hat Hunter, Hat Hunter, Hat Hunter, Inspired Learning, Hat Hunter. Buffs stack, okay? So, I'm not entirely sure if the Inspired Learning uh, will steal an already existing buff, or, how I see it, that the Hand Hunter steals all the buff, and the uh, Inspired Learning will steal a buff the mob didn't have. I'm, like, I have to apologize here on this state. I don't know if this is now correct or not. You better, um, you maybe have a better idea. But there is one fact if you're saying, wait a second, these guys are blocking each other. No, that's not the case. We unequip Headhunter now, right? 
Uh, we're just gonna kill uh, some a rare pack. Do we have some? Yeah, maybe here. You're gonna see something now. You see this buff here, Inspired Learning, okay? This is this orange buff here. Now we equip the Headhunter and kill off some more packs. You're gonna see that we have two buffs now. Three buffs coming from the Inspired and one here is the Headhunter. Although, um, you're gonna admit that, or at least we're gonna say that the Inspired Learning, this buff is like nine buffs I stole with Inspired Learnings at the moment. Seven, I stole all the buffs from the monster, okay? Does that make sense? So basically, the Hat Hunter steals all the buff, the Inspired will steal another buff that was maybe there, maybe it's the same, just stacks up, or it's going to steal a completely new one. I'm not sure about that. But still, this is the main explanation, okay? You have two different buffs here. One is Hat Hunter, one is Inspired. That tells us that this strategy here with uh, combining those work, okay? Thing is, we have three Inspired Learnings. Means we're gonna steal three times the buffs. So, if we're gonna go back to Hideout. So, now we have this Phenomen. So, one buff, one buff, one buff. Means we basically end up having, uh, yeah, maybe... As the explanation five and six on top of that so in killing one pack with four buffs i get like a big big pile of buffs right and these buffs can be damage area of effect soul eater attack speed uh whatever buff energy shield life like every single fucking buff that exists in the game you can steal with this uh combination with the hat hunter okay the Hat Hunter is not the only thing, it's the main thing. This is actually a build that focuses on the Hat Hunter. It's really a build that is built around the Hat Hunter, not like other builds where you say, like, hey, this build is insane, but if you have a Hat Hunter like Magic Finders, you get more speed, more damage, but it's not a mandatory item. In this build, it is a mandatory item. So if you say, like, yeah, I don't have the currency, I don't I just make the carry without Hat Hunter, yeah, it's not gonna be that efficient, okay? So Okay, let's get to the next important part of this build. And this is the uh, Shackles of the Wretched with the um, combination of Chaos Roots. So, how does this work? Um, as soon I have here Herald of Thunder, Curse on Hit, Temporal Chains. The Temporal Chains are socketed into the Shackles of the Wretched, which says curses in this item are reflected back to you. That means, um, if I just m remove, uh, this, like, let's kill one enemy, let's see what happens. Basically remove this one now. So we're gonna see the difference. Basically what happens, I'm killing something, I get the Herald active. Ah, oh, I should have reset at the area. So, Herald is active, these guys getting temp chains, I'm getting temp chains. So, why do I wanna curse myself with temp chains? Cause it makes me slower, right? Yeah. First of all, we're gonna counter this effect in equipping the Chaos Rouge, which have action speed, cannot be modified, below base value. That means, although, we're gonna check again if we're gonna get the self curse again. Oh, where is it? Here we go. Now you see how slow I am with the boots. I'm getting quite a nice speed buff. They don't have movement speed, but I'm not getting minus movement. It's not below base value, okay? So even though I'm self cursing myself with temp chains, I still have a respectable movement speed out of that. So I'm countering the movement speed effect with these boots. Juggernauts get that for free, right? Because they have the ascendancy for that, the unstoppable thing. So, why why do I want to curse myself with temp chains? If you're going to see, once I have temp chains, you're going to see that my buffs last longer now. And this is the thing that we're going to reach. Now the numbers are in white. As soon as I'm self-cursing temp chains, they are now written in blue. Blue means things are going to last longer. All my buffs. 45, whatever, even flasks, everything will now last longer because the temp chains uh, is making everything uh, expire slower, right? And this also counts for my buffs. And this is now important because Hat Hunter and Inspired Learnings, as we remember, has 20 seconds buff duration. Now they are not lasting 20 seconds, they now last 30 seconds, 40 seconds, something like that, okay? So, just a reason why to self curse yourself. The next thing on the list is the Solstice Vigil, which has the Shaper's Presence for 10 seconds. This has also the effect, right? So if we, uh, how are we gonna make this one? Um, yeah, if we unequip this one basically and just gonna keep on killing mobs, at one point, here we go. We, now we have the Shaper's Presence and you see all my buff numbers are also written in blue. 
Why is that? Because the Shaper's presence will also let the uh, buffs that we have expire slower. Plus the Shackles of the Wretched. So you see, we don't have a 40 seconds now, we now have a 60 seconds. My Hat Hunter buffs last three times longer in this scenario here than they usually would last. And if, you got, if we're gonna just uh, finish this run here with Shackles of the Wretch, just uh, killing off those rare packs, then you can actually check on my buff bar. How long does it take that one second disappear? So, 15, what, 14. So it's like two seconds, right, at the moment. So if you're gonna kill some more mobs, temp chains, 19, 18, 17, 16. So you see that the buffs here do last longer. Wait a second, I'm actually stupid. Fucking hell, dude. First of all, I need to activate my uh, Terror of Thunder again. I was like, hey, why does they tick so fast? No, now it's now it's the real number. Now we are self-cursing temp chains. There we go. Where is my Shaper's Presence? Uh, now it's active. So. Now we need a rare pack. Oh god, bad showcase. Do we get one? We don't, okay. Still, we're gonna do this again now. Oh, wait a second, sorry. Because I have, I forgot to activate my uh, Herald of Thunder again before I equip my gloves. Okay, so now we have my Herald of Thunder online, okay? Now we get my Shaper's Presence. Now we're gonna kill some rare packs. And let's see how long the buff lasts now, right? So, let's kill one more. So. 18, 17, 16, yeah, nice seconds you got there, okay? I think you understand the mechanic behind this um, temporal chains self-cursing um, Temp, uh, temp Chain Solstice Vigil combination with the Chaos Roots. This is to counter the, the movement speed. These ones are to buff our the length of our buffs. So, this is not everything. We're just... I, I really try to explain this as easy as possible so you can follow along why this is so completely stupid. So, we have not Temp Chains. We have Solstice Vigil. And there is another thing that is new in the league, and this is this jewel here. It's the Glorious Vanity. I have here... Um, where do I have them? Two Glorious Vanities and a couple of Divines here. This is a showcase on what we're gonna achieve or what we wanna achieve. Okay, this is mine. I'm just going to unequip this one. Thing is... Actually, let's check this one, why I have this one. There are some weapon... Uh, like curse effects, right? There is some on the tree, if we're gonna check here. Uh, curse effect. We have some over here. Effect of your curses. This will also make our temporal chains be even harder in the time of uh, expiring, or at least like um, the buff effect of the temp chains, or the curse effect, right? So it's not going to give my headhunter one extra second, it gives me now uh, two extra seconds, because we are stacking the effect of temp chains. So we make temp chains stronger, so the buff lasts even longer. So, the thing is, these um, are the Val Jewels, the Glorious Vanity, okay? That means, I now have here, the, these guys are just transforming everything that is in radius, right? All the notables, all the small notes, and so on. The thing that we want to seek out for is the ancient hacks. This is uh, effect of curses. I have one here, one here gives me 14, 24, 28% uh, effect of curses, just because of that. That means 28% 20 per, uh, more effect of my temp chains. So, how do I know what kind of jewel do I need? The thing how I did it, I was just equipping this one, right? I type in here curse effect, one time as you always have to like delete one letter and then edit again so it gets refreshed. I see here, curse effect, this is the non-curse aura. This is not the one we're looking for. We're looking for the increased effect of curses. This is the one we're looking for, okay? So here I have now here one increased effect, here we have 10%, here we have legacy of the Val, nothing too special. I unequip this, I divine it, so the number of the sacrifice is changing, and in the name of now it's Xibakwa, it can also change with a divine to Serfi, to Doriani, to whatever it is, right? The main fact is, divine it, equip it, Change again and check again. So you see, now we had here some curse effect. Now we have only Legacy of the Vile stayed the same. Now we have one effect of curses over here. Okay, unequip, divine. Now it's Surfy, 3202. Equip it, effect of curse. Oh, this is good. Here, commanding presence. Area of effect of Aura skills does not affect us, okay? 
4%, that doesn't matter. 5% is 9%. This one doesn't matter as well. So it's bad. Next divine, okay? The thing is why I'm having multiple of those, why you should do it with at least two of those is, I can say now, uh, wait, flame to flash. I'm just gonna check this for my friend here. Um, yeah, nothing too fancy, okay. Let's say this is my current jewel that gives me effect of curses over here and here, right? I don't wanna reroll this because this is the actual bad thing that I found yet, right? So I unequip this one, put it to the side, divine the next one, equip it and play with this one. As, and I wanna see if I get even more curse effect out of this new jewel. And as soon as this one is better than the other one, you can vi uh, divine this one again, right? This is how I did it. This is how I managed to get the curse effect. Uh, not too bad, especially good because we have here the ancient hex that is also applied to the inspired learning to make this one happen. So this is just small explanation why this jewel is so nice uh, for this kind of build to make your buffs even last longer and how I managed to get mine, okay? Check. Next thing, inspired learning clusters, pretty obvious. You need four um, of these notables over here. That's the bigger notes here, right? In the radius, you need four of those. One, two, three, four. This one is actually bad, I'm gonna say, cause the endurance charge and the revelry is t four skill points wasted, okay? You don't need that shit, but you need to scale them to get your, uh, your uh, inspired learning running. Same over here. This one is actually pretty good because this one has a lot of good stuff. Frenzy charge, damage, life. You uh, was usually the, um, what's it called? I think the max resistance. And here we have multiplier. All of those are nice, okay? So let's unequip this phone quick. Here we have, yeah, all resistance, max cold resistance, multiplier, frenzy charge. If you need the accuracy, you can take this one. So this slot here is always super nice to have and easy to get. Then we have one on the top side here, um, which has the blood drinker, which is usually, if we unequip this one, is the life cluster, frenzy charge. And then we have two that are useless, basically, right? One, two, no, wait a second. Hey, wait a second. I scaled too much, I guess. <coughs> Sorry, I, I scaled too much, actually. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Holy shit. Sorry. We got it. We got it. Okay, now we got it. So, we need four notables in area. I have one, two, three, four, five. I'm actually a noob. So, what we're gonna do here is take one, two, three regrets, take out this energy leech here, one, two, three, and the inspired learning will still work. Why? Usually, you had these four notable cluster over here that you always used, but the resourcefulness over here does also count. This was in the old inspired learning builds. This one wasn't here before. So you had to go one, two, three, four to activate it, right? Now with the resourcefulness, one frenzy charge or here uh, the Val thing, right? With his uh, physical damage reduction, which is nice for the build, also works. And the only useless thing is here the mind drinker because we don't need the mana here. Okay, the rest is pretty usual. Crit, crit, multi, life, whatever you can get. And of course, weapon range. This is the point here. Uh, I don't really want to go too in-depth into here. For me, the main focus with this video is to explain how the combination, how to boost your headhunter. Uh, still, path of building link of this character is in the description below, okay? There is still one thing I want to mention here. One was the rampage thing, how I get this one rolling and then a weapon swap, so I still keep this going. But there is one more thing that I want to talk about, weapon range. Okay, so if we're gonna pull off the weapon range uh, on the Path of Exile Wikipedia, this is the current uh, changed updated weapon range. That means weapon range is how far our attacks are going, right? You see here, daggers have the lowest range with 10, highest one would be as a melee weapon, thrusting one-handed sword. So a thrusting one-handed sword is a jeweled foil and an and apex wrap here or something, all right? All these, these weird, Foils here. These are thrusted and they have weapon range of 14. You see it also on the weapon itself. So mine has plus three weapon range. This is something you get with the essence of dread. This is the, the highest one here. It goes for like 60 chaos or something. That means this one gives me one weapon range, two weapon range, three weapon range. What I did is just craft one and you'll off the other stuff multi mod, right? Nothing too fancy here. But the weapon range will now increase insanely. So if we're gonna take it like this. 
uh, probably even less. How can we reduce the weapon range even more at the moment? Yeah, unequip carcass jack and get the cyclone into... Yeah, instead of precision, for example. So, now our cyclone range is getting slower. Okay, let's take another... Uh, probably the blue one. So we see where it's... How big it is. There you go. This is my current weapon range, okay? So, without the weapon, this is my cyclone weapon range. See? And now with 17 weapon range, it gets like twice as big. So, why not using double jeweled foil would be the question now. So, we have this prismatic eclipse that you probably came across quite often. Um, the cyclone is taking the bigger weapon range of both weapons, okay? So, if we're gonna check this one, this has weapon range 11. And this one has 17. So, you see, this one is actually... Um, it's the same radius. God damn it. Okay, why is that? <laughs> That's actually funny. Why is that? Per white socket on this weapon, I get plus 2 million weapon range. The thing is, this one is global, okay? This is not... This one, the 17 weapon range, only counts for that weapon. The 6 here, with 3 white sockets, is global. That means it counts for the other weapon as well. And why is it the same range? Because 11 weapon range plus 6 is 17, which has identical weapon range with uh, the jeweled fault over here. But the thing is, if you're now double equipping 17 weapon range on Cyclone, you will have 1 times 17. Now, with the global one, this one has not 17, it has plus 6, which is 23. And now my Cyclone is getting ultra huge, okay? Now, with other gems, now we're gonna take into account the uh, Carcass check, which has 50% increased area of effect, which is, yeah, quite a lot. With increased area of effect, with uh, pulverize, or is it pulverize? They both give me more uh, AOE. So you're gonna stack AOE, AOE, AOE with this build, and then in the end you have like more, or at least like a screen full of your cyclone. We are not here to do a lot of damage. My cyclone does 100k damage, 90k damage. That's nothing. That's not comparable to any kind of Uber Elder. Um, how you say Uber Elder fighter or something like a, a typical damage build? No. This is just for killing off the first packs, because we are getting damage with the amount of buffs that we are getting. And as you saw on the clip before, once you get the first buffs going, your DPS will increase, your area will increase, and then you're gonna get this rolling. With all the effect of the Solstice video, with the self-cursing temp chains, and the effect of curses, our headhunter buffs will last two minutes, okay? So after 20 seconds, it usually falls off, right? No, this time it just scales up 20 and it stacks, it stacks, it stacks over and over again. Sometimes you're gonna reach a million energy shield just coming from your headhunter buffs and inspired learning buffs, okay? So, and this is why this build is so insanely sick with this uh, emblem run. There is a lot of rare packs, a lot of champions, whatever. Uh, you're just gonna kill them over and over again. You're gonna stack a lot of buffs, and in the end, you have two, three hundred headhunter buffs, which makes your damage by like t hundred million damage. You have I don't know how many thousand life, and you're like unkillable at this moment. You probably end up having like 0 0.0.1 attacks per second, which would be equivalent to like a hundred cyclone attacks per second, and this with every hit does like ten million damage. So, so this is just. I just want to explain to you guys why this is the top-notch top notch build for uh, the emblem carry. And please do me that favor, don't try to reproduce that, okay? Because these stones are not that valuable. Because everybody is like, oh, please carry me, carry me here, carry me that. I want to have that big loot, you know? Yes, it is profitable sometimes. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. But in the end, it's not like you're gonna earn mirrors in there, okay? And despite this build costing more than three mirrors to just run them, have fun grinding back the currency that you need. I think Headhunter is a very fun item, but if it gets abused like this, it's just... I don't like it that much. And I hope, I just hope, guys, I, that you don't do any fancy stuff that you think like that you needs to play this build definitely not worth it unless you want to go for level 100 but therefore you get a carry or something i did the level 100 uh today it was like every day a level it was pretty sweet to level today i finished 99 from 0 to 100 in six hours the experience is insane i'm gonna admit that it's probably the fastest way i've gone to level 100 uh in the previous leagues with this league um 
in total. So, yeah, ups and downs, I would say, but like I said, main priority for me was to show you how this is working. Okay, this is enough talking, enough explanations. As I said, if you're really interested in this one, part of building link of my character is in the description below with the gems, with the setups, whatever you need uh, for your own, uh, yeah, for your own Cyclone if you really want to rebuild it. And yeah, so... Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. I hope this video helped you a little bit understanding this mechanic. And yeah, see you on the next video.